Hello and welcome to the first video of the semester on section 2.1 on the tangent and velocity problems. The field of mathematics can roughly be broken down into four overlapping areas of study. Quantity, the study of numbers. Structure, the study of algebra. Space, the study of geometry. And change, the study of calculus. The calculus sequence is the foundation necessary to enter practically any physical science field as they all study change. Consider electricity. Your world is powered by a moving subatomic particle called an electron. Electric current is the change of electric charge on an object, so we will need the language of calculus to explore and quantify this phenomenon. Newton's laws of motion, Einstein's theory of general relativity, Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism, mathematical models concerning the climate, economy, medicine, and meteorology are all built with calculus as they are describing changing conditions. Calculus has many complex applications that stem from a single concept known as the limit. To introduce limits, we look towards the tangent problem. The word tangent is derived from a Latin word meaning touching. A tangent line to a curve at a point P is a line that touches the curve, not passing through, and only touches the point P on the curve. Tangents are a local property. That is, the tangent can cross the curve away from P, but near P, the tangent is touching no other point. Given a function f and a point a f of a on the graph, a tangent line to f at the point can be found by using secant lines. A secant line to a function f is a line which cuts through two points on the function. Take the points a f of a and b f of b. We can draw a secant line through the points. Note that the slope of the secant line is the change in y f of b minus f of a over the change in x b minus a. This will become very important later in the chapter. Leibniz, one of the discoverers of calculus, described tangent lines as the secant line of two points which are separated by an infinitesimal distance, and this is how we will consider them. When constructing a secant line, we can't let b and a be the same point, because it takes at least two points to define a line, and because the slope of the secant line through a and a is undefined, we are dividing by zero. The secant line isn't a tangent line at a, because it crosses through the curve and touches it at two locations. Imagine we keep our line, but we start to move the point B. Where B moves, we still have a secant line through A and B that fails to be a tangent line. Following Leibniz, we decrease the distance between A and B, moving B ever closer to A. We move B as close to A as possible without letting the distance between them reach zero. Do we ever reach a stopping point? Can we find a B that has the smallest non-zero distance between itself and A? Don't get distracted by these questions, yet. Here is where the concept of limit first arises. The tangent line at A is the limit of the secant lines as the point B moves towards A. That is, it is the line which you can predict from the sequence of secant lines. The majority of Calc 1 is the study of tangent lines and their applications. In lecture, we'll take a closer look at secant lines, their slopes, tangent lines, and their slopes. And in the next section, we'll explore the concept of limit. You've seen the basics. Now work towards mastery through practice and study.